Hello, this is Craig, and this is episode 5 of Building Minecraft in Unity. In this episode, I will teach you about small land brushes, um, how to create a variety of them and use them. Large brushes, such as mountains and streams, will be next episode. Uh, now, I uh, uh, the folly of trying to do these in one take is that sometimes you screw up and you have to start over and then you don't remember exactly where you were. So I believe that I've reverted to things mostly to how they're supposed to be, but I don't remember whether or not this, uh, this create brush might have been different. I think it was a little bit different in terms of the values it gave out, but it's the same basic function. Um, and similarly, I have up at the top, I lay down eight layers of topsoil now. I didn't want to keep doing the, for the, the only one layer thing. So where does that leave us? Leaves us like this. Oh, and I also make it, I think I make it so that all of, the, there's now lots of brushes per chunk rather than just one. That's also, that's all very easy stuff um, to the point where I, I don't think you're going to miss anything by not knowing how to do it. Uh, you know, more brushes, just run a for loop that adds more brushes. Um, so all of that aside, Last chapter I told you that the brush was so simple that it didn't need its own class, it just needed its little teeny struct. That was wrong. Uh, rather, that was a lie. I just didn't want to do it because uh, it would have made things more complicated. We do, in fact, need a script for our land brushes. First off, it doesn't need to be a mono behavior, so we don't need these. But it does have to have these here. Same thing. So, let's go ahead and create ourselves a um, instantiation tool. I'm going to comment it out this time instead of deleting it. Uh, that was pretty stupid of me. There we are. So, obviously, we don't need to create a brush, we already have a brush. There we go. Oh, did I screw something else up? Oh, of course. Um, we have to tell it to just do it like that instead. Uh, we don't do this create brush crap. We just do new brush, uh, land brush. X, Z, terrain dot chunk size. Um, I may have actually separated these two lines out. Uh, it, it shouldn't really, you should, nothing has changed aside from small uh, details, so you should be able to keep up with it, but I'll include it in, uh, I'll include a project with this upload so that you can always go in and take a look and see what's different if you are, are feeling lost and lonely. So the other thing we need to do is we need to take this apply brush. We don't need it to exist. Um, we can go ahead and put that in the brushes. Oh, too many publics. But instead of passing in the brush, we obviously have to pass in the chunk. And we don't need any of these brushes. We need all the chunks instead. There we are. Perfect. And then down here, chunk dot set brick. Easy enough. Over here in chunk, we're going to go ahead and change set brick just a little bit. I'm tired of falling off. So that'll make us at the lowest layer, can't be uh, erased. So we have to go and also tell it to apply that through the brush. So very small changes. All right, now we've moved absolutely everything that was in, uh, that was related to the brush into its own little brush uh, uh, class. So what do we do next? Well, let's go ahead and define ourselves a couple of brushes. Easy enough. So here, instead of doing this kind of creation, we'll go ahead and leave those as the defaults, and then we'll do a switch mathf.floor to int random.value times 5. And we'll just come up with five different kinds of brushes that we want to use. So first, I think that we'll come up with a default that will change the block into a normal rock block. Uh, we don't actually need to have snow. Uh, case one, 
block equals two, which is water. So since it's water, um, we'll go ahead and uh, make it. Uh, uh, well, how, actually, we actually want to change how it paints, but for now that'll work fine. We'll, make, we'll change how it paints in a second. So what we've done is we've done this very, very basic thing um, where we have just created it so that it, it says, well, we've got four kinds of brushes that we want to create. And there you go, four kinds of brushes that you're creating. But they're pretty boring, right? Let's go ahead and add a fifth just for fun. And we'll make that block equals zero. So what we're actually going to do, just to make this so that it lines up a little bit better, um, three, two. Zero. <laughs> so now we have a block type that actually carves holes. See? Easy enough. But those spheres are starting to look kind of boring. We need some other brush types. Okay, well, let's go ahead and define it as an enum. Public enum uh, land brush shapes sphere, and then we'll go ahead and create a pool. So right now, let's just go ahead and change everything over into pools. Uh, so we need to add your Let's go ahead and make a default to pool. And so here in apply brush, we don't actually want this. We This will be another public void apply pool, or draw pool. I don't know. Uh, draw sphere. Our pool is slightly different. Chunk, chunk. See? And then here we just put a little switch, switch, uh, shape, default, draw sphere, chunk, break, breaker, case, uh, land brush shapes dot pool, draw pool, chunk, break. Of course the pool doesn't exist right now so we go ahead and just copy this. It's basically the same function. Let's do draw pool and our max y will be equal to that. There we are. It's that easy. But on the other hand um, we don't want to sink it quite so low into the ground. There we are. Because it'll only draw up to that height. So that means that you would end up uh, with pools that were underground only. So here you can see we've got nothing but pools now. And these pools are flat, and that's because we... Uh, oh, except for that, that's a hole. The pools are flat, and that's because uh, we aligned them all with the surface I created. Well, you can go ahead and do a lot of things here. There's no reason to limit it to random.value times 2. So, for example, if we just create a little bit of height, So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I want to create lands that actually have, you know, mountains and shit. This is just, you know, creating little teeny details on the ground. And that's true. I'm going to teach you how to do mountains next time. Uh, the small brushes need to understand where the, where the surface is so that they can make sure that their drawing makes sense. But we will go ahead and add one more just for kicks. We'll call it Pillar. Um... Yeah, pillar. We'll do pillar first. So here, when we are doing this white one, let's go ahead and make this into a pillar. Uh, shape equals land brush shapes dot pillar. Um, and size will always equal either one or two. Like this. And block will equal four. Yep, that'll work. Uh, oh, and we want... Yeah, that'll all work. So here, when we have landbrushshapes.pool, we actually want to have another one named landbrushshapes.pillar, which actually should come first. And we're going to go ahead and clone, again, copy and paste code. Not a terribly great idea, but I want to do this as fast as possible because last time I ran out of space. And I don't mean that my hard drive ran out of space, I mean that Game Studio can't handle anything larger than 2 gigabytes. Alright, so what we're going to do is 
uh, y, instead of being about size, it's going to be about 10. <laughs> uh, so this will actually be pause.y minus 1. There we are. Um, we don't need to, we don't need circular pillars. There we are. So let's see if we have any pillars here. Those are big ass pillars. Um, the size is much too large. There we are. So you can use these brushes to create a wide variety of things. Uh, let's just go ahead and set it to equal to 0.5. Uh, so I've just shown you how to create a couple of very basic things, um, but you can obviously customize this as you see fit. Uh, for example, uh, I'll have to. If we're if we're smart, what we will do is we'll change it so that the pillar doesn't work like that at all. Uh, but I'll do that next episode. For example, you can create a composite brush which paints a pool, but also paints sand around it. You can create a brush which paints water, um, unless it hits a certain kind of terrain, in which case it paints sand. Uh, so you can do a lot of cool things when you separate brush off into its own area. And in the future, I'll be showing you how to create, uh, I'll probably just provide a pack of brushes. Because um, what I'll actually end up doing is uh, probably using delegates and a couple of other details that I don't want to spend half an hour describing. Um, but basically, this sort of system is very flexible. Uh, and should work fine for everything you need to do. Uh, so you should just go ahead and uh, use it. Um, these small land brushes are functional enough to serve all of your detailing needs and in the next chapter I will show you how to create actual terrain. Um, the chapter after that, I'll probably show you how to create intelligent land brushes because there are some things you can do like do like creating uh, uh, ruins or cities or stuff that I I am not covering right now. Um, I'm last time I created like about 15 different brushes and I showed off all of them, but I don't have the space to do that. Uh, it will crash if I try to do that. So I'm going to leave you with this, and I'll leave further brushes to your imagination. <laughs>